Apple is going to cancel the iPhone and replace it with this. At least that was their original plan, but now things have changed. We're now just a few weeks away from Apple's biggest event of the year, where we should see some huge iPhone upgrades, a slew of all new products, and finally, the oh so mysterious Apple product, this mixed reality headset that is set to kill the iPhone. But some all new leaks on the iPhone 15 are changing the story, and now it seems like Apple might be preparing for their biggest flop of all time. Let me break down the latest drama, tell you the new leaks you need to know about, and why Apple's reputation as we know it might just tank. The last time I did a video talking about the iPhone being canceled, the comments, as you can see, were just absolutely brutal. It looks like many of you just despise the idea of Apple canceling the iPhone. You just don't think it's gonna happen, but I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but let me say it again, the iPhone won't be around much longer. They're working on their next big thing. They have plans to sunset or cancel the iPhone so they can be less reliant on this and more reliant on this. Of course, this isn't gonna like happen tomorrow. The iPhone is still a huge part of Apple's business, making them billions and billions of dollars a year. But if we look at Apple's own history, look at their own playbook, we can sort of get an idea of how the story is gonna ultimately end. I mean, just go back like two decades ago, Apple's big hit product, what they are known for was the iPod. They were changing the music industry. The iPod was their flagship Halo product that was going to set up the company for years and years to come. And while it did do that, it totally changed Apple's trajectory and made them a bunch of money. There is no iPod still on sale today, and that is for good reason. The experience was changed, the industry changed, and the iPhone just provided an overall better experience. And that is sort of set to happen with the iPhone as well. It won't be around forever, and according to industry insiders and analysts who know Apple and study Apple and know this technology, what they're saying is that over the next 10 years, the iPhone will begin to be phased out and a new product, a new type of tech, is gonna replace it. And that is where we start to get into a whole lot of drama, with a lot of the drama sort of headset aside, coming right now from the iPhone 15, because the more info we hear about this phone and the closer we get to its launch, the more it looks like it might just be kind of a huge disappointment. Basically, it seems like the big changes happening with the 15 lineup this year are the swap of lightning for USB-C, some general camera improvements, maybe some new colors, frosted glass back on all phones, dynamic island on all phones, and then maybe some new telephoto lens system on the biggest, most expensive 15 Pro Max. A lot of those early rumors hyping up the iPhone 15 to be some huge change and a big redesign and a lot of new features were coming, that isn't actually happening. And some of the features that we thought were gonna happen for sure now aren't. Like Apple is not in fact going to remove uh, the physical buttons. Those will remain to see another year on this phone, but we are gonna get the removal of the mute switch, that little toggle that's been on the iPhone since the beginning. And it should be replaced on the pros with a new mute button that might be programmable, sort of like the Apple Watch Ultra's action button, which will be really cool to see. And I've seen a lot of criticism online and in the comments of these videos from you guys, and rightfully so, at the 15 line isn't gonna be super exciting, especially the regular 15 and 15 plus aren't gonna be huge upgrades, which sort of begs this bigger question as to where is the iPhone line really going? How much can Apple change on this phone to make it exciting and more innovative than the competition. Uh, we have uh, sort of Apple's roadmap for the next few years leaked out, and it seems like Apple's gonna remove Face ID components and sort of move it under the display. Maybe they bring back Touch ID, we get some better camera improvements, we get uh, 120 hertz on the base models, we get better screen tech, Apple's own custom cell modem. There are certainly some things Apple can do in the next three to five years, but ultimately, like let's look 10 years down the road, what does Apple do to change ultimately what is like a slab of glass? Yeah, the software could get better, that's great, but hardware wise, have we sort of peaked with the iPhone? Have we hit its best and final form? What could they really do to make the iPhone exciting? Or is it time 
then Apple just moves on to something else. Studying Apple's own history, we've seen where they have excelled by offering a totally new, unique, and immersive experience that the competition just can't compete with. I mean, the Mac back in the 1980s offered this amazing graphical user interface that may have been lifted from Xerox, maybe not. Good artist copy, great artist steal, great job, Steve. Uh, but it really just offered this amazing new experience that was so much better than the old sort of monochromatic DOS experience that Windows and Microsoft was providing. Then came the iPod, which was amazing, better than all other MP3 players. But then came the iPhone in 2007 that gave you all of the experience, all the great parts of the iPod, plus so much more. So many new features, uh, an app store eventually, a way more immersive experience that sort of led to the iPod's decline and that's where it seems like we're sitting right now on the cusp of something new that if Apple could deliver an all-new amazing more immersive experience that took the best parts of the iPhone but put it into something else made it even better that would sort of mean the beginning of a new chapter and the end of another which is where Apple's sort of planning to go if they can do things right. And finally, after years and years of rumors and leaks and will they or won't they, we are finally, knock on wood, supposed to see the reveal of this headset in June at Apple's big WWDC event, making this one of the biggest Apple events of all time, making a landmark transition away from one product category over to another. And this could be a really big deal but what we're hearing is that the headset, as cool as it may be, is currently facing a number of really big problems that might just make it a total flop. For example, we're hearing some Apple executives saw a demo of this headset at sort of a private Apple event in the Steve Jobs Theater and were sort of underwhelmed. Some were sort of not impressed with the tech, some thought it was a little too buggy, and some, surprising to hear this, thought that Apple shouldn't release it, at least not in its current form, because they were afraid it could become a failure. I mean, we've never heard before, not that I can remember, uh, being this close to a launch and Apple executives looking at a new product and thinking this thing might not be great and might just fail. That's not inspiring a bunch of confidence. The other problem it's currently facing is that there are some severe hardware limitations that might hold this back from being a super immersive experience. One of the big things I'm concerned about, and I saw many comments on this before, is as a glasses wearer, um, am I going to need special prescription lenses or how is that going to work? That sort of intimidates me a bit. Also, we're hearing that battery life isn't going to be good. Not only is it going to have an actual tethered cable to a battery pack you'd wear uh, on your waist or put in your pocket, but battery life is only supposed to be two hours and then you're gonna have to swap it out with another battery. We're hearing it's gonna be packed with tech and sensors and high-res displays, but that the hardware itself might not be as seamless or immersive as Apple or Johnny Ive specifically would have originally liked. Another problem that might be Apple's biggest issue right now is that the headset, according to those in the know, lacks a killer app. It lacks a killer feature that makes you go, wow, shut up, take my money, and uh, I wanna buy this thing immediately. And then of course, there's just the small issue of the price because we're hearing right now, the headset, at least this first gen, is going to be expensive. Could be $2,000, likely $3,000, $4,000. It looks like it's going to be quite a pretty penny if you want to pick up this original Gen 1 OG model. Apple has been known for this. The original Apple Watch models were seen as a bit expensive. The OG iPhone was seen as expensive. This isn't out of the realm of possibility, but if Apple is trying to position this as the next big thing, having it priced at three or $4,000 is going to be a little cost prohibitive for many people, and they're going to have to seriously work to get the price down. Yes, of course, that's probably going to happen over the years. It's going to get cheaper, but at least this first model, if you want to try it, is going to be pretty darn expensive. Apple certainly does have a tough road ahead. They've got a lot of critics and naysayers they're going to have to compete with and really shut down, but I do think it's important that they make this next step because we do need to see Apple evolve into new product categories. We haven't seen a new Apple product in quite some time, at least in some new category. 
And if Apple can get this right, they can provide a new experience that's great and lessen the reliance on the iPhone, it's gonna set them up to really win and succeed in the future. The iPhone is great, but it's not gonna be around forever. And I think this new technology has a great possibility of being even better, being more immersive, and ushering in a whole new era for Apple that is going to be wildly successful. I should also mention, probably should have done this earlier in the video, but let me just say this. The headset is the idea of replacing the iPhone. It's not gonna be the headset for 20 years, but I think it's more the idea of the technology and the experience it provides is going to replace the headset. We could see glasses, we could see uh, different variations of this. I don't think we're all gonna be walking around uh, in public with a headset on, but I do think what the headset sort of signals to what it represents is a shift in technology that will replace the iPhone over a certain number of years. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? I know I'm gonna stir the pot with Apple uh, canceling the iPhone, but let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think the headset is gonna be successful? Do you think it's not gonna be? Are you excited to see what this post iPhone future could be like? Are you gonna buy one? Let me know your thoughts down below. We can discuss the headset in the comments. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you all in the next one.